Hey guys, Loman02. Uh, I'm doing a video recording. The audio is likely not to be great because I'm just speaking into open air and hope that my computer picks it up well. Unfortunately, I picked up a buy round one with a pretty spicy deck that we're going to be running today. So we're going to get a chance to watch some of the other games. Um, and if I'm speaking too loudly or modulating my voice oddly, it's because I'm trying to speak loud enough that you can hear me. This is the deck we'll be playing today. It is a five-color reanimator deck. Um, sheets, omniscience's, crystal brands, light steel, and miracles in the play. Got a standard through the breach sneak attack package uh, as well as show um, and tell, um, and then just standard reanimator plus some instant speed reanimation effects that work very synergistically with um, Emrakul the Ant Storm. Does not work with light steel, obviously. Uh, mana base uh, is ridiculous. Um, it's got all the lands. <laughs> um, but it tends to work out actually pretty well. Higher land count because you are actually very mana dependent with the deck. Um, even if you know the actual CMC, average CMC of the deck is like 2.6 or 2.62 or something like that. Um, it, it does need to hit its lands um, to do some of the more powerful plays. Because typically speaking, when you're when you're doing your when you're finishing the game, which generally you do very rapidly, um, it, it's the casting of two to three spells in, in a single turn uh, to do it. Uh, board plan. Um, well, if Moto will cooperate, it appears we have frozen, folks. So, we're going to go ahead and wait a minute. All right. Yep, Barbarian Ring, uh, for Containment Priest. Uh, besides you, Counter Magic Dispel. Counter Magic is very efficient. Uh, Duress, same thing. Uh, Nature's Claim, um, good against Rest in Peace. There's not a lot of main deck answers. I think the only main deck answer we actually run for that thing is um, the Nahiri. Uh, Defense Grid, again. Uh, Sickening Dreams, just a synergistic effect for beating up on Weenie decks. Gain, say, again, Counter Magic. Uh, Virtue's Ruin against White Weenie. Uh, City of Solitude, pretty obvious. Counter Magic, uh, Chromatic Lantern, um, kind of an interesting techie sideboard option against like red deck wins for Blood Moon. Um, Elish Norn, you know, Weenie. Um, Sphinx of the Steel Wind, red base decks. Um, type, tight Spout Tyrant, um, if they're white base, we'll probably bring this in because um, it's good against Caracas. Um, and then Ulamog, um, Living Wish package inside the deck. So, you know, if we do lose our one Emrakul somehow gets exiled, we can go get that one. Um, so that is the deck, and uh, let us go and see who is playing. So we haven't really picked up a buy. This is Total Hate vs. Ganzi. And it appears they're still starting the match. Yeah, hopefully today goes to finals. I would, I would enjoy playing this deck three times in a minimum, but... Then again, other players may not like it. There's a lot of players um, that do not appreciate um, the reanimator um, or, or combo decks in general. Because this is a fairly hard combo deck. This is probably like one tier above. You know, the hardest combo deck I probably built in this format is Storm. But this is probably the second most hard combo deck that I've built in the format. Um, so we're deciding what we're going to do here. And let me see if there's another game up. Nope. Everyone is waiting for their opponents, so we will stand by, and I want a quick pause. Uh, we've got some action in the AEF Fabricio versus Booze Mongoose. AEF typically plays either Red Deck Wins or Mono Green uh, Ramp. A solid start for him, down to five cards, though. Um, Booze Mongoose typically plays Blue Green or Bug based decks, but we shall see. And this other match, uh, we have a Land War Elfstar from Gonzi, looking like he's on some sort of Abzon based deck, or possibly just rock coloration. Um, Total Hate tends to play five color decks, uh, combo decks, similar to the one that we're playing right now. Um, not reanimator style, but combo style decks that use like Scape Shift or something like that to win. Uh, maybe Hanging in Ancestral Visions here. No? Okay. Okay, it appears he is on blue green again. Of some variety. We got a Courser and a Woodland Bellower on top, which is a strong card, uh, but he may be looking for lands if he's playing that card turn three or indicates a turn, strong turn four play, like probably Garrick, um, would be my guess, or something along those lines. Maybe an Obstinate Bail, which is obviously far less powerful. Um, we do have a Brainstorm here on Gonzi's End Step by Total Hate. Looking for what? Um, probably Fixing. Um, my guess is he can't combo on, on two mana. If he can, it's a very powerful deck. Um, and it's a very high variance draw. Um, Alright, Natural Order is on top. That's a worrisome card. Probably means that Counter Magic will be getting left up. He could go even for the Crater Hoof. Yeah, Crater Hoof looks like it's going to make sense here. Um, at a minimum, 
So we have Bant. Well, hopefully there's a counter spell, because that natural order means Woodfall, or Prashen, um, it means, um, Crater Hoof Behemoth, which is obviously problematic. And he's tapping out for something. That's still castable, though, so that means that the Priest Titania will get tapped down, and he'll take Near Infinite. Yeah. This is an interesting idea, though. I have not seen Grand Arbiter played a lot. I don't know if it's good enough. I think you just Natural Order and Smash Face here uh, with a Crater Hoof Behemoth. I mean, I guess that may not just kill him outright. It's going to force another land in a Wrath uh, to deal with the board. Yeah, I think what we're going to see is it's going to sack the t uh, Priest Titania, get Crater Hoof Behemoth, and attack in for, that's plus four, nine, five, 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 or nine, five, five, four. It's close. I think that is probably enough, though. Actually, no, that's not even close. That's that's way more than enough. That's, that's the game. That's a good game right there. Um... Yeah, unless he has, like, I don't know, Shining Shoal? Yeah. And that is what Green Combo can do. Very fast draw um, out of AEF, though. Very strong, very fast draw. Um, total hate to 12 life, so he's getting beat down pretty handily here. Can you turn the game around and stop the beats? A lot more cards than his opponent, but his life total is not looking great right now. He's obviously still digging for something because he didn't fetch first, which would have meant he wanted to flip his Jace. Could have done that for the Maelstrom Pulse, though, to blow up the Kasali, possibly. Or you said I'm setting up some sort of like reanimation kind of loop. I don't know. Hard telling. He doesn't have a wrath here though, because he wouldn't want to leave his Jace in play if he did. He wouldn't leave his arm sorry, he wouldn't want to leave his Jace as a creature if he did. It's a strong pull. I'm gonna force the use of the Kasali Pride Mage to keep the things around. Um Yeah, I like that. It's a two for one. It may only be a 1.5 for one if it trades with things, but it's still still pretty strong. And he's still on seven cards. So what is he setting up for? Let's go ahead and take a look at what these two players are on. I think we're going to have ML is probably going to be on White Weenie today. No, he's on Blue White. Cool. Playing against Reanimator. Uh, it's Living Death. Yeah, Living or... I wonder if, if ML understands how this deck works. He may or may not. Because he could get randomly blown out by it. Then again, he has Wraths in his deck, in this version of the deck that he's playing. Um, okay, so he did blow up the 1-1 one, one post the pump, putting uh, Total Hate down to 7. Um, and does he have another creature threat? Okay, Brainstorm. Yeah, I don't think ML understands how this deck works. He may just beat him to death regardless in the interim with the sort of Fire and Ice. Oh, he drew his living in? That stinks. 
He brainstormed back in, probably. Or find a living death. I mean, it looks like counter magic is up at this point, though. Okay, Rune Scarred Demon. If it doesn't get countered, it appears it will not. Okay, well we have Tassiger, which means that there is a blocker on top, or there's a blocker out there that can take care of the things. And three cards, though, I mean, it seems possible that he has removal of some sort. Well, maybe not, because, like, the Jace has stayed in play. Does he get land value off the top? I believe he's already played one this turn, though, yeah. Well, passing it back, that probably doesn't feel as good. No, Wasteland. It's nice. Hit the blue land. That would be my guess. Gain the life. Hit the blue land. Or the seaside citadel here. Hmm. You know, I was not sure how to progress here. He may have a Wrath or something like that in hand um, that he just wants to throw off here. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense, though. You'd probably want to save that for Living End. Keeps the Karma Guide around. Hmm. Interesting. Well, Seaside Citadel is still in play. I've only wanted a mana up, which leads me to believe that we could probably see uh, Swords to Plowshares along those lines, or Path to Exile. Or he just has bigger plays to make. Maybe he has the has the um, Scape Shift and is saving his lands for that. Obviously, having one on top now after post wasteland is not great. Um, he could use his Jace to get rid of it, though, which I think he probably will, because he already has another fetch land in hand, if I'm not mistaken, that we saw above the wasteland. Well, that will get the Courser. Oh, this is, oh, it's a, okay, an O-ring. Makes sense. For the Runes Guard. And you probably block the sword-wielding angel. And a Brimaz. He is kind of extending into Living Death here. If if Armand has it. 
So I'm pretty sure that's what he's looking for. If we see that, it's a rook beats. What's his force of will? Yeah, living death. There we go. That's, yeah. That's kind of why I didn't like that Burma's play. And there's nothing for that thing to get. No, he's got to have Wrath. Um, not out of the realm of possible. You know, actually, he just wins here, doesn't he? Yeah, he only has one flyer, so all he has to do is fire up. Oh, no, 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 never mind. The Karmic Guide can block the fairy combo. This is Wrath, I assume. Some form of Wrath. Supreme Verdict, possibly. Bulgari Charm would be hilarious. Regenerate them all. If it's Supreme Verdict. It looks like a Supreme Verdict. Do you have a Golgari Charm? Nope. That's sad face time. Could fire up the Fairy Conclave and get in there for two. Although, I might as well just feign counter magic. Yep, I'm gonna fire it up. All right, total hate gets him. Okay, found a consecrated sphinx uh, from bribery him. So <laughs> bring to light for bribery. Okay, bring out an interesting card. I thought maybe you should have that in uh, in this reanimator build I'm running. It's at least interesting. I don't know. It may be slower, slower than what I've got going on. I don't know if that's the case or not though. Yeah, what three? Kind of what he's got? No, he doesn't have a blocker. That goes right past with the sword. Um, so let's probably game unless our monster deck has more interaction, and I assume it does. I'm gonna assume it's an extremely interactive deck. And the crappy thing is about I'm not saying his deck's bad, but the thing that stinks about living deathing for um, the creatures he living death for is they don't have ETB, so he didn't get a lot of value off of it. It's just a bunch of big guys. Um, sword equip. Yep. Oh, do you have a kill spell? And seven cards, I mean, it's possible. I just don't think he has a ton of interaction. Yeah, it looks like it's just the end here. Yep. Alrighty. Well, let's see what's going on with Sensei Rob and Rob Zadar. Rob Zadar is likely on a White Weenie, and Sensei is likely on some sort of four-color control. Um, the Phantom a Centaur. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Three life. But let's see he's on pure Abzan. Two cards to one. Does he have removal? Maybe worth consideration to equip one of the spirits with the um, skull. That way you keep one good ground. There you go. Yeah, yeah. If he doesn't have the removal, that makes sense to me because it forces him to tap that um, as opposed to the centaur, um, which can block successfully the hero of uh, Bladehold. However, he may just have lethal. Like, this is a lot of damage coming through. This is a significant amount of damage. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, if you fire this thing out, it's four... Plus two more of these, ten just from these. Yeah, that's lethal. If he just alpha swings and since he does not have removal, uh, the game ends. I don't know if this is a game two or one. I guess it'd be a game two. Um, so hopefully we get more magic and since they won the first one. I think this is over.
yeah, I mean, it, this this critter is frankly irrelevant. He's got enough just with the um, just with the onboard, unless Sensei has something. This obviously shores it up a bit better because he can use it to activate his uh, smuggler's copter. Yep, makes sense. Could they made just batter skull just a little bit better? Made it so it was like cranial plating where uh, it has um, attach as opposed to equip. <laughs> they may be asking too much. Um, all right, well, do you have it? If Rob has it, he has it. He can get him pretty good. So one of these blocks this thing. One of them blocks the quarter. This thing blocks the hero. That's two plus one, or plus two. So it's four plus 15. Yeah, he's dead. I, mean, I guess you could always stack it wrong. Um, he did not. <laughs> so that's not going to work out. If they're already attacking, like, what could you have here? What does the pie in the sky answer? I don't know, a fog? Probably not. Moment's peace. It'd be pretty funny. But if you had a kill spell, it already it already came out. It should have already come out. Um, yeah, it's, it's way more than enough. Okay, well, it looks like it's either game one or game two, so let's uh, get a couple of these running again. I kind of want to see Living End take a game. I think it's very cool. I think it's going to be tough against counter magic and just cheap threats, though. Yeah, that fires up to bang into the Ajani. Johnny not so good against Garrick, obviously. Six to six cards. Yeah, God needs definitely advantage here. Let's see with the man lands. He does have a threat. He have a kill spell for the treetop if it comes alive. I guess it's probably no. I mean, you could have like a Glenalandra. No, I'm not a Glenalandra. Uh, what's the card called? Uh, um, Vendillion Click, but that doesn't really do it. He plays his land out untapped. Interesting. Very aggressive. I wonder what he's got here. He's got to have a lot. Okay, we've got an even mind sensor. Oh, we hit Eyes of the Wizen. Yuck. I guess none of these were, like, stellar, but still rough. Yeah, aerial responder. It's kind of meh. I mean, it's good enough. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to do the job here unless he can uh, do something, you know, with a living end. Um, yeah, this feels pretty over. Um, I guess he can kill the Elspeth. Yeah, Mana Leak, yuck. You have a Spell Pierce? No. Okay. Elspeth is, um, yeah, darn near impossible to beat. Does he do Ding Down the Elspeth? I guess the Garrick, because the Garrick kills him next turn. I don't know. I think this is not a good position to be in. Yeah. I mean, the Garrick doesn't kill him. Does he kill him next turn? It's like 9. No, it's 12, rather, plus close. It's close. It's not quite there. 12 plus 6, 18 damage. Yeah, it's down to 2. It's not a good spot, that's for sure. It's definitely going to take something special here. It's another massive spell. Wow, he's been hurting that man. It was like a Genesis wave or something. Or like the Hydra. Armageddon. 
One match game. That is an odd card to have in that deck. I mean, it's a very strong card, but it doesn't seem like it fits in a deep analysis Sphinx's Revelation deck. I guess we'll do it from this position. I mean, this position, yeah. It, it seals up what was already pretty much locked up. I just don't see it as being a... I mean, it's a card for aggressive decks, I think. It, it works best in those decks. In this position, I mean, there's absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing I can think of that totally could do, barring, like, restrict or ban cards from format. Yep, that looks like, uh, that looks like a good game right there. So we'll close this one down. It's, okay, so we got off the living at death, or living end rather. Get in there with the brutaloids. What does this thing do? Oh, it cascades. That's about it though. And it regenerates. Blocks forever. Two minutes blast. Pretty cool. So the two minutes blast blasted into this thing, into this thing, into living end. I'm assuming that's how that sequence went. And then you got these three things back. We we missed it, but that's my assumption on how that sequence went. Dust Bowl. Actually, not good in this matchup. Shockingly enough, he's playing a whole host of basic lands. They really can get away with it because every card in the deck almost cycles. Check out this mid-range on aggro matchup again. No, well, Rob is tainted pack four. Exiles Roif. Gets the Reclamation Sage. That yeah, makes sense, especially if he kept a greedier hand. Oh no, he doesn't. He exiles it. What is he looking for? Rob is typically not a combo player. Sort of white and shadow, okay. Well, I guess that may just be what you want. No green, though. But there is indeed a sword. There's another one drop. Okay, Soldier of the Pantheon. That is technically a green creature. So he's going to get hit with this thing. Do you have like an obstinate Bailoth in hand? Because that would be probably stellar for you. I guess the cool thing is, is the sword does get cards back if he discards creatures. He's not blocking the arbor.
No, it puts a three into play. Ouch. It's a lot of cards. Well, this hand has definitely worked out very well for Rob. Well, Rob Zadar, I'm sorry. They're both, their first names are both Robert. Oh, cool. Well played. That was also a good thing to have. I was just commenting on Rob Zadar's hand just being stellar. And uh, since they pulled a trick out to kind of stop this, uh, this nonsense he's got going on up here. We have another threat. No, it just re-equips. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I'll blow it up in response after he blocks two things, would be my guess. And free block with the Wicker Boa. Interesting attack, unless he, he's just going to, okay, I would still block. I mean, he can pair it up, but then he still loses his card, which, in my opinion, would be fine. Yeah, see, that's fine. Like, just a first striker. It's still white, technically. So, then what we've got going on over here, we're blocking and bouncing things. Oh, and all the things are dying. And it looks like he's gotten value off Eyes of the Wise, which I don't think I tend to mind. I don't tend to mind the card um, as a sideboard option um, for creature based, for beat down based uh, decks uh, for the blue matchup. Man, his hand has been awesome. Wow. Yeah, his draw has just been stellar. Forcing the mirror into Thalia. And given the, the one bad downside of the vial is, you know, it's going to run out for, for two. Do you bounce the Thalia? Nope, you just play it out, I guess. I think there was an option there to bounce. Um, I mean, obviously, vial kind of makes that embarrassing, but. Take a beating. Sensei can gain a lot of life, though. Down to four. What else have you got? I think you blow up the vial and um, lead back the wicker boa and bounce the Thalia. Then he gets in three damage. You're up. You don't want to fetch now, unless you're fetching a basic, I suppose. Yep, all right, basic. Yeah, blow up vial, bounce Thalia. I just gotta win the game. And he's gonna take a minimum three next turn if he does the line I'm thinking. Ay ay ay. No 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 no. Oh man. Ugh. Yeah, so this the vial is still there. Yeah. That's probably close. It's not quite yet. 
That is rough beats, though. Like, you need to play around Vile. Yuck. Yeah, I, I don't think... I think Sensei probably could have won this one. I mean, whenever, you know, Rob fogs out and lands, I mean, if he hits Armageddon next turn, the game's just over. Or has it. You obviously don't attack here. Yeah, yuck. Because he can't take all three of these hits, so he has to block one of these things fruitlessly. Yeah, you, you block the... Yeah, whatever. It doesn't really matter what you block. You go into one. Or into two, whatever. All right. Wait a second. I was thinking I saw my insane, so good. An Ob Nixilus. Very cool. Obviously, don't take the two. I think you still want to attack there, actually, though. Um, yeah, I really do. Because if he, like... Well, the sort of Feast of Fame is gone, so I guess he doesn't have protection from this nonsense. If he draws, like, an Elizabeth, though, it's just game. Game over. Attacks with all. Okay, well, you block the Thalia with... You want the Thalia just... I, I guess not. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he'd rather just... Oh, wait, wait, no, no, you can't do that. No. I guess he just flips it. A disenchant on a sword. Good pull. Yeah, I think that one play is going to come back to bite uh, Sensei Rob here. Um, the attorney flipped Thalia. Huh. Acidic Slime. Which means that at least Vile is no longer a thing. Probably do plus one here. Just so you can destroy a creature. Yeah, I think you have to. Well, obviously that's not good to draw. Fetch lands on one life. Generally not good. Uh-oh. Getting a whole boat of life. I guess he can block here, though. Oh, it's protection white and black. I guess he cannot. King's life link, so he goes up by 5 plus 3. Doesn't look good for our knot here. Who else is still playing? These gentlemen are. Let's see what's going on in this match.
It's quite a life. There's a lot of life. Well, you definitely flip the Thalia back to, to hand. Gives him a lot of draw time with um, with the Obnixilus. Oh, both very well developed boards. Kills the Jace Notion Thief in deck. Interesting. Well, there is a V Velicut. Evidently does not want the V Velicut. Six card types in graveyard, so he can get whatever he wants here. Pretty cool. I actually just took that card out of my reanimator deck. Had a tougher time than it appears he does uh, getting it to delirium status. Oh, Primeval Titan. Well, the Jace is dead because of the uh, Yavimaya um, Dryad. Yeah, it appears that Total Hate's kind of taking control of this game. That's game, guys. Oh, of course, Sky Fisher flipped it out. I, I, I thought we just went back from this play, seeing the unhallowed, whatever that thing is again. It's, it was odd to me. Well, can Sensei make it happen? Wow. 
It's brutal. Yep, the games. Well, there's a dark depth on the board. Yep. Then you could probably just do it for six after you attack. Kill the board, why not? Let's see why you wouldn't get in with Yavimaya Dryad as well. Should end the game with Toxic Deluge and Dark Depths on the board. Two cards in hand. Would, would, have, would have definitely removed the, um, the Prime Evil Titan if he had removal. I think you have to. Although, who knows? Prime Evil Titan's just... I mean, that card is just good game. Like, if you resolve that thing, like... The game is probably going to end. I mean, I don't think he cares if you kill it for two of your cards. It's already gotten, you know, a four for... Now it's going to be a six for one. So he'll kill two creature cards, and he'll have gotten four lands out of deck for the one card. Okay, well, I guess he'll regenerate all of his stuff, but that makes it a lot easier. Now, actually, what his opponent has done is allowed himself to... He's allowed his opponent to keep the Sphinx. Um, so we're going to see... This happened now for, you know, for, oh no, just recurring nightmare. That's probably good too. A lot of value. Hey guys, I'm going to take a quick restroom break. I'll be right back. I'm going to leave it running. Okay, guys, we're back, and yeah, it appears that is the line he went with. He um, used the Deluge after rebuying back the Primeval Titan. Yep, that looks like it's probably a good game. All right, and it looks like the round is wrapped up. I'm going to go on a pause, guys, and we should be playing next round. All right, guys, round two is underway. We're waiting for our opponent to join our game um, table. And this is the first one started, so it'll be a green Stompy or a green ramp uh, versus uh, white weenie. And let's see what else is up. Nope, just waiting. All right. Rob will likely play first if he has the option. We need to close this game out quick. No, I don't think it is a great matchup for him. I think the green deck can just go bigger, faster. Um, there are certainly some some cards that. Can put him out of the red in the matchup though, um, and help him out quite a bit. Let's see what he leads on. Probably a two-one. Yep, one of the better ones. Definitely a strong two or two-one. Especially if you can follow it up with two one drops. Although I don't know if that's what you want in this matchup. Be kind of interesting to see if he blocks here. May or may not. I mean, if he has, if Rob has removal, he's probably going to take that thing out. Because time walking AEF is, is going to be strong in this matchup. Because that's really. Okay, Knight of Glory. Which is cool because it means, like, actually now this thing just can't block Kythian. Although, maybe he wanted it to. I don't know.
Is he attacking with his forest? No, okay. Alright. Alrighty, guys. Let's see what he plays real fast here. Nah. We'll get to our matchup. Alright, we'll keep this. Not the best of hands, but not horrendous either. Um, so, we need to find a discard outlet um, to get the Titan in the graveyard, and then we can set up a DD combo. That seems good. So, we'll have... Sylvan carry to the next turn, likely under counter magic capability. Oh, a threat. Oh, land tax. That's fine. I don't think the game is going to go that long. Now, the question is going to become... No, we definitely go for the Dak Faden next turn. Um... What's the best draw in the deck? The best draw in the deck is definitely Ancient Tomb. But we want the discard outlet here. Mother of Runes is fine. It's interesting. Let's take a quick look at our lands here. Shrink this window down. One black what? Black white scrubland is in the deck. Mm. Yeah, we'll go with the old scrubby land. And here, I think we just go Dak and set up for Titan next turn. Show and tell is also a very interesting. Oh, um, so it's collective brutality actually. Collective brutality is going to be nice because if he gets a flying threat down, um, he can use his mother runes to fog out our um, our merit lage token. He could also just have like a Caracas. It's something we have to be leery about. We do the crop rotation to take care of a Caracas. Okay, Cortisar. Not a problem. Oh, Mary's call is interesting. Um,
All right, so. Let's get the Dark Depths Thespian stage down. Still gonna take all the damage here. I think we actually go for this now. Okay. Interesting. Can't have no kill my um, Dak Faden if he likes. He had to attack with both. Yep. Yep. So he needs to land tax again. He's got the wall in play, which means I mean, we're not killing him with one Emrakul hit, but we have an additional 20-20 coming out, and he's going to have to sack six permanents. So if he blows up the board, I tend to be fine with that because I can put out a Thespian stage 2020 in response.
Hmm. I think the key here is that we don't we don't want to die rapidly. And Elizabeth tends to win games out of nowhere, so I'm I'm putting both at her. Yeah, I mean you can have protection black, it's fine. They don't want to block two and it just sacrifice a bunch of lands. Um so I don't per se see an issue with that. It's gonna come down to what do you sacrifice here? Maybe it was folly to make the Merrill Age token. I just didn't see Wrath in his hand at the time. And even Wrath doesn't do it here. He may have to like swords to plowshares it. You know? And then I'm gaining 20 life. I got a lot of time. And I do have this crop rotation, which can, you know, based upon why I start drawing, because the bayou wasn't a good rip. Um, I get a bizarre Baghdad and start um, reanimating things. Okay, it tends on blocking. But the Caracas is in play, and we gave him the time to make that mistake. He'll just take the damage now to the Alice that is. The Alice is gone. Yeah, I mean, there's no point in blocking, man. They're, they're both going at Alice So you just lose one more permanent that way. Well, I guess that's protection from black. I guess there's no point in not blocking, but it doesn't really make a functional difference there. All right, so counter a magic and things. I think the rest is going to be fine. Actually, hmm. this deck is in a weird place for me. I almost want the Elish Norm, but I don't know if I do. I think I do want Defense Grid. What's worse than it? Possibly this thing. Just slower. Dispel? Yeah, probably. Take out. Well, Cabal Therapy is a nice combo with the Academy Rector. Take out the Living Wish option, possibly. One gain save? No, I think Dispel is enough. What besides you? No, he's not like a pure counter spell deck. Let's give this a shot. I already have a lot of ways to deal with creatures. I don't think I need Sickening Dreams for this matchup specifically. Like, he has a bunch of them. And, like, besides you, he's not like a complete counter spell deck, so I don't, like, really want that either. It's just much slower than what we've got going on. Hmm. Gainsay could be right. There's kind of discard, though. Like, I feel like, and I have instant speed reanimations. I can do it, like, end steps and stuff like that to, like, sneak them in there. And then if he counters that one, do it on the next turn. So I feel pretty comfortable. Um, we boarded this correctly. Duress could be right. I got three already, though. Who would I cut? Thought Scour? Yeah. Hmm. The rest is probably better than Thought Scour. Let's let's go ahead and resubmit. Alrighty. So yeah, this is a keep. He's gonna play though, so he could probably counter my first play. Keep it. It's not great, but it has early interaction and it has a way of drawing a bunch of answers. We have a turn one. Yep. That's not the kind of turn one that worries me, though. Nope. 
If we're lucky, he'll skip his land drop just to, to do this. This is nice. Oh, he's going to attack. Okay, so he has got a turn two play. Yep. STP. See if he has a counter spell for it. He does not. Interesting. Well, he does not want to play a creature here. Because I will firestorm the heck out of it on my turn and reanimate. Although if he does nothing, that's kind of actually not great for us. Because we kind of do want to do some things and some stuff. And we need to use fire. I guess we could firestorm his face, but like that just seems so marginal to me. Especially if he has like removal in hand, because like Jingataxius is not a great threat. And our own. Okay, well, that gets rid of Jingataxius. Although, you know what? Here's, here's how we do it. So he's tapping out for a detention sphere of what? Probably the library would be my guess, but it could be the defense grid. Like, that's not even a... Okay, the defense grid. Okay, well, you're tapped out. So I probably am going to, to go to face this, this turn with Firestorm. I will pay for, like, to keep this one in hand, and I'll put this one on top. So I would like to make my land drop. And I believe we're going to get an underground at the sea. Is there any point to pondering here first? No, let's save it for the follow on turn. Um, so what we're going to do is this. We're going to firestorm his face. Okay. And discard you. Okay. And reanimate you. And draw a whole bullet of cards. Yeah, no, we'll save that. the way here.
I'm gonna wait on this actually. Let him start discarding cards. Yeah, deprived. Yeah, you got counter magic, I figured. Okay, now it may be time to go for something a little more radical.
All right, guys, that should be good games. Because he should never get a turn again. But Caracas will ensure that, his and mine. Um, as long as we can leave it untapped. So, we have... I can't believe enough mana. We need to move blue mana to open. Which means that his pierce is dead. We can just draw a land off the top too. There's our land, yeah, we'll see. Okay, put on top and put on top. Well, do you have force of will? You do not. This is a good game. Yes, I would like to do this. Yes, I want omniscience. Yes, I am casting empathy. And it's plenty of time. Alrighty, let's check out the rest of the games. Card seems good. Well, Shriekmaw is a great card, but I don't think it's going to do much here. This game looks like it's probably ending relatively soon. Um, looks like Armand has, uh, has failed to find lands for a few turns. Well, there's a land at least. Yeah, Chandra's just going to end the game quickly. She's not contested, like, she uh, she tends to do that. Once there's an emblem in play, like, just casting any nonsense spell just wins the game, right? Because it's like five damage a turn, so Thunderous Wrath, like, two or three times a turn. So unless you have Hexproof, um, you know, like an Ivory Mask or some crazy stuff, you're probably not going to work. Probably not going to work out too well. Is this ultimate on eight or seven? Seven. So next turn I'll have an emblem and probably win off of it. My guess would be with five cards in hand. Um... Note if we do have to play total hate, we just have Thespian stage and deck. Yeah, this this means it's game. It means he can cast three spells this turn. Eh, brainstorm, ponders, lightning bolts, eh, whatever. You know, it just at this point, the game is probably out of control. Passes it. Interesting. Wonder what he's got. Probably has like a Mystic Confluence or something. You just draw three cards. I don't know. It's odd to me that he just didn't win right there. Um, this is any spell. It's not non-creature spells. There's a Murderous Red Cap. Well, it's a card. Don't think it beats Chandra Emblem.
Uh, what are we going to see here? I was thinking Mystic Confluence, draw a bunch of cards. Could just be an Expel, Sphinx's Rev. Oh, Cord, okay. Well, Chandra does five to face. Cord, four. Maybe his own murderous Rev Cat? I don't know. I, I don't even know what's relevant. Okay, yeah. I don't even know what was relevant there. And we should be going right into round three. Yeah, I'm going to go on a quick... Hey guys, sorry, we missed game one. I'm playing Rob Zadar here, and um, get a pretty stellar opener. I'm going to keep this. Um, it's a little questionable, um, but we ended up getting him with like a turn three or four Jenga Taxius. Okay, that's a strong one. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. I'm going to play this thing out. Take my two and like it. This is interesting here. So, what have you got? Take our four and like it, I suppose. Okay, Graph Digger's Cage. That's actually fine. And a Relic. Cool. Well, a lot of hate. Um. I know my top card's a land, so I'm going to shuffle the deck a little bit here. And I think we go for a Savannah. Yeah. Well, we don't want this, and... We'll probably put back this.
I'm actually going to kill this thing. Um, the factory costs 10 mana to use. We'll still lose our DAC here. And what's your follow up? Alright, this thing. Alright, so show and tell is the card now that we need. He's down to one card. Yeah, that's fine. It's going to be dangerous. Kind of want to go for show and tell. It just depends. I mean, does he have. What does he have? In and. This stops the beats for a while. That'd be. Okay. It's Path to Exile. Like, that's just a huge beating. Yeah, okay. Maybe just jam. Okay. Well, some means of killing the board would be nice because that means we can go into an infinite loop with uh, with Emrakul. I guess it would be Mother of Runes and Figure of Destiny. Yep. Pretty pretty obvious picks, I think. Um, yep. That's going to allow him to get through for three next turn. Actually, you could just do it probably all on attack. Well, strong rip. And that's why we play the card. And we will take a Gristle a Brando. Or we can just take this thing, right? Yeah, this thing's fine.
Okay, got it. Good games, man. Um, all right, let's go see what other matches are still going on. And we'll sit in and watch a few. So blue green or blue white versus green should be interesting. And this is problematic, obviously. I can take care of Nissa. Hmm. Yeah, Nissa needs to be dealt with here. Obviously. And card advantage engine. Um, I'm going to mention eventually I'll just get a beater. Although, Nykthos is looking pretty bad. Reclamation Sage. Um, well, yeah, we got a couple of Planeswalkers up there. We have a Garouk Relentless and a Garouk Primal Hunter. I guess it'd be the Primal Hunter is the one that comes back. I don't know. I could see, I suppose, either that ever makes more sense to me. It's a card advantage engine as well as Nissa. So, yeah. 3-3, three, three, I would assume. <clears throat> now, you're not going to get a lot of mana off that thing if you're trying to convert it into mana. Three three. Yeah, ML you gonna hmm it's a tricky spot because like ooh. Well huh. Be yeah, a primeval titan getting dark depths combo. Not gonna be a uh, crater hook here, it doesn't do enough damage. Um it's not quite good enough. Um and he could just wrath the board next turn, although the planes could probably still mop up. Uh AEF's gonna win this. That's that's certain, I think. Um there had to be like some crazy combo cards in ML's hand or in his draw. Uh, but this is going to get prime time, getting Dark Depths. Um, that's being staged. Would be my guess. Know this. Well, infinitely greedier play, but I think I think the, the Dark Depths combo is the stronger line. Because um, it just says, hey, Wrath my board. Hey, also have a Swords to Plowshares. Hey, have two answers to two Planeswalkers that are generating card advantage every turn. Um, so yeah, yeah, like that's... That was a rub on that, I think. I think that was a stronger line. You go for the cards. I think it's a little, a little greedy. I think you just do the sure line, which I think is the um, is the Dark Depths combo off of Prime Time from the Nat Order. But we shall see. I think you just give your opponent more outs the other way. Let's see what these gentlemen are doing. Based on this match, uh, we'll see if we're, we're playing another game. Never make her put something on top, right? Yeah, okay. Cool card. Very cool card. I should probably play more with it. No, I'm not going to chase here. Or he's going to sack this thing. Oh, it's a burning one. That's very sweet, so it's going to go into an acidic slime, possibly. Oh, counter magic. Yeah, that's, that's probably it for you. It was a strong card, though. Attack? No, I guess can't attack. The Maze of Vith is in play. Yeah. yeah. I hate to call him, but this one looks over, too. Um... Let's go back to this. Yeah, this this mess. This is not good. Not very good at all. Having four paid, just a big thing. Can't get raft. Needs to get, you know, swords to plow shared. I approve. I don't think it is bound to to bear that much relevance here. I think you just start jamming with everything, you know, and you already got enough. I guess if you're Idea is to make like a massive like Genesis wave or something like that. Then then that yeah, makes sense. And that Green Warden getting back natural order, <laughs> getting Crater Hook Behemoth winning the game. Um, 
on the spot. Uh, he may have a counter, but like even then, like doesn't matter. He's gonna sack the Green Warden with the Natural Order, get back another card. This is gross. This is how green decks are are gross sometimes. A little longer is a good one. That is not a bad one right there. You're getting top, it's a bad day. And he can sack with the root to get some pretty serious stuff on, on four mana. Yeah, it didn't sack the way I think he probably should have on that. I mean, I think he sacked the non-hasty creature. I don't know what he sacked. He sacked a token. Maybe he made one this turn already. In that case, it may make more sense. I don't know. I can almost just see getting back a Reclamation Sage. So you have another Derek on tap. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that made sense. T-Whiff, that's mono-huge. Jay's down to one. I think you actually want to maze the other one. So never make her has a has kind of a more potent ability. Maybe even fire up the man land here. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna say maybe fine. You know, I guess you don't have to. That's just a ton of damage. That game? Yeah. I could copy. I guess being secret, I had to copy the other turn. Copy the maze of it to like buy time, I guess. I don't know. It seems kind of loose. Well, let's see if comeuppance. And Snapcaster for Murk Cut. Okay. Or Abrupt Decay. Abrupt Decay probably makes more sense than Murderous Cut. I didn't know he cast it earlier. Um, so you Murderous Cut the Goyf. Block two of the three threes. That still doesn't quite do it. because Well, never mind. The Mother of Rune is just going to stop this nonsense. So Murderous Cut. Um, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. This is still lethal. Uh, just two over the top of that plus nine. So that's dead. Um, you have Mother of Runes to protect. Yeah. All right, so Booze wins the match. I think that means that we are done for the day, unfortunately. So we had one bye, and T Hate was the only other undefeated player, and we just beat Rob, which means I guess we're the winner of the event. Um, so sorry, guys. Um, we didn't didn't get to play three full rounds. Um, I was kind of hoping there would be a final so we could, we could play that, but, um, you know. Sometimes I guess you get lucky. I mean, well, one of our anyway, we got lucky, period, because that deck is a big pile of nonsense. Um, very sweet nonsense, but nonsense nonetheless.
And I think the board was deets. I think the board was pretty deets. Like, the board didn't really come into play against White Weenie, although his board significantly did. Um, but this dual strategy of, like, omniscience versus reanimation was very nice against a lot of cards he committed to that actually it very much so inhibited his primary plan of beating the crap out of us because he's casting, like, these one-drop hate cards that do nothing in and of themselves. just rocks, right? They just stop me. Um, which is nice. Like, that's why, like, I think with White Weenie, like, the route you want to go, I mean, Contain Priest is expensive. So, like, throw the money, I got it. Like, another one that's not is, um, uh, I think it's Knight of the Pale Curve, Samurai of the Pale Curve. That is not an expensive card. And, you know, if a creature card enters the graveyard from anywhere, just exile it. Any permanent, I'm sorry, permanent, exile it. Um, which is awesome because that card is cheap and it, it has, generally speaking, an effect that you want that's twofold because one, it attacks. Two, two, it's a bear, two white mana. You know, Samurai Fox. Um, but the card itself, you know, is cheap and also stops Reanimator. Um, it's a fine board card. And it's a bear, so, I mean, it sticks to your primary plan. Whereas, like, Graft Digger's Cage is, like, you know, it's great anti-tinker, anti-dredge dredge tech. But if there is, in a 100-card deck, like, I don't, I feel like it's very tough. You have to be focused, but you also want to have a couple routes to victory. Um, and we definitely did in that deck. And, um, you know... I mean, given, like, Containment Priest wouldn't have even stopped what we did there. Um, neither would uh, of, um, the, the, the Samurai, but those two cards do attack as well, so they end the game faster. Well, that stops a lot of the mana. That's that's not bad, but, I mean, this board paid is just massive. This size huge. Um, Vigilance Trample Undying. So it gets through for one damage if he protects with his mother. Very cool hate card. I don't know if he runs his main. It is a cool, cool hate card, though. I just, I wish, it, like, I think nowadays, if I think it was printed, it'd be, like, three mana. Like, that card would be a staple if it was three mana. I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm thinking so with, like, a spike. It's funny, because I was talking with a, a player, uh, Winter Wolf, um, and I believe her first name is Paul, about, about spike units, and... I have to admit that, yeah, I definitely am more so on, on that spectrum of play. I look at cards and evaluate where they can be best and how to best engineer things, which I know can be so off-putting to some folks. Um, but I suppose it's my nature. So board paid, block, take one, protect with mother. Yeah, makes sense. Board paid is a cool card. What if you run Strangle Root Geist on the deck? That's a cool card, too. Like, those Undying mechanics were pretty sweet. I mean, obviously, they're not as great in formats where, like, Path and Plow are things. Um, but, still very, very cool. Great anti rat tech. And it's just big. And it's got a lot of green mana symbols, which is nice with, like, things like Mythos. Well, now we can double block it, lose a Finx, get a Finx back. To keep his Lingala by protecting, so attacks are stopped. Although we do have a Moss Warp, what is this Moss Warp Bridge? Which, Tenegrator? I should know, I just used that thing yesterday in a very, very similar deck to one that uh, AEF's playing now, a uh, Cradle Hook deck against actually player ML. Uh, I forget what deck he's on. I think he's actually on this deck. I think it was a mirror match. Not a mirror match, it was the same matchup that he's playing right now. Very close. Um, Oh, Serpapard. Sweet. I'm, I'm kind of happy to see that thing get in there. It's probably a board card. Very cool. And now the bridge is open. So what huge thing does he have under the bridge? Nothing that's that relevant, I guess, then. Rolflos is just a 2-1, remember? Because of the Linvala. Linvala is a good idea, though. Actually, I should probably consider that for, like, my white weenie decks. The problem is, is, like, where the white ramp or the green ramp decks kill you is like not on turn four, and like you really can't ramp white weenie other than like Mox Diamond. I guess you could play like Ancient Team, or like City of Traders, but like that just seems kind of meh. Maybe Chrome Mox, but like you're not really like gaining a lot of card advantage in that deck, so it seems like it's tough, tough to do that in it. Yeah. This game is very slowly spiraling out of control. This cannot be countered, so now it's going to get. Um, a Fierce Empath. Fierce Empath will get Crater Hook Behemoth. Crater Hook Behemoth will win the game. 
Let me see if he can cast it, though. He's two mana short. With his elves, he would have way more than enough. Um, my guess would be we'll see him get that, though. Yeah, the problem is if ML can't use his counter magic, he's an aggro control deck, um, is how I would typify his deck. Um, and you saw the first game where he played a much more um, a much more aggro portion of the deck, and the second game like he just was very much the control because like I don't think he could afford one. He didn't have the mana to do it, and he really couldn't afford to tap out for any threats. Um, but when you have a card like Prowling Serpent Card, that card is just kind of the best of both worlds against this deck because one, it's just a big beater, so. It, just e easily takes care of like one and two drop creatures that you can get down early and then back up with counter magic and it just stops counter magic so like it's a pretty fierce beating no pun intended um a primeval titan makes sense uh we got that makes actually more sense than my line i like that better um rogue's passage um so that will mean that ml will start taking significant damage probably off the primeval titan who i guess they can start passing through damage. I guess Wrath of God is a way for him to get back in this, but that also brings the War Paid back. I guess we'll see here. If he attacks the Linvala, that means he's probably going to Wrath the Gord. Um, let me my guess. He probably has to, but the problem is here, like the War Paid comes back and a Primeval Titan comes back next turn. That at least takes care of the Mossword Bridge and really, more realistically, the Rogue's Passage. Primeval Titan will be able to get the other half of the Dark Depths combo. If he's blowing up land here, yuck. I guess he could pray that his opponent doesn't have another land, but on like a green ramp deck, I feel like that's kind of kind of dicey. Um, then again, his opponent could just hit Dark Depths too and be like, yep, good game. Um, I guess he could block. He could block that all day with some other runes, but oddly enough, like I feel like AEF could be, like, beating down right now. I don't feel like he has to feel like he has to stay back because a double block can kill his creatures. Like, that's not profitable for ML, really, either, because he's taking so much damage. Um, this would be Dark Depths Treetop Village, or Dark Depths and Wasteland. Or Tech Edge. Those three cards, I think permutations of those three cards, possibly fourth if he wants to go Treetop, but I don't think he needs to. Um... Definitely be Dark Depths though, plus plus the um, plus one of the the land kill lands. Um, could even be his own Dust Bowl, but then like it'll just get Dust Bowl itself. Oh, here I guess like the problem is like you just Dust Bowl and like knock on the land, but like who cares? Like it's like you're spending four mana. Okay, I guess he wants to try to play around it. Like if ML's spending four mana essentially, it's three mana to activate. I got that, but you're tapping the Dust Bowl. To kill a land and not develop his board while he's being overwhelmed by this many these many cards. Like I don't see that as being good enough. Um, you know, Dust is great. Don't get me wrong, but like Dust Bowl is better in like decks like this where like you just have infinite lands. And it's like, oh, you're gonna play five color. All right, cool. You know, cool reanimator. I'm gonna blow all your lands up. Even I mean, and again, like that deck is fast too. Like Dust Bowl is a slower card. It's an attritional. Like it's a good card. In, like like some like mid range like, I like it in control actually quite a bit. Um it, it's actually a mirror breaker in control, much like um much in the same way that I think um Thawing Glaciers used to be. Obviously it's not card advantage like uh Thawing Glaciers, but the selection it gives you is just pretty phenomenal. Okay, well there we go with that whole nonsense. And there is now a six five or is it a seven six Forget how big this thing gets. Was it a 5 4 before? Alright, it's a 6 5. Um, and a 2 1 coming back. It's a lot of good cards out of his deck. Well, he does just have like a big beater. You can try to pass it through. No, he's got this thing. That's infinite cards. That may just be concession worthy. Pierce doesn't get it here off of the Hollow Fountain. Let's see, this is the last game. Well, it's unfortunately the last game. It looks like it's going to end in quite a horrific beating here. This thing, I think you pay a mana whenever you cast a creature spell and you draw a card. Yeah. Not infinite mana. Makes sense. Um, so you see this thing go in. It's a block. Interesting that he didn't draw the cards. He definitely did before, I thought. 
because he kind of exposes it to like an overing effect. Um, which if he's got it, I think he plays here. Batter skull, yeah, batter skull is sweet. I love me batter skull, but it's not really going to do much here. Um, I guess it can kill a four paid in conjunction with the Phoenix. Begin to scry one every turn. Although I don't, I don't think this card's quite good enough. Um, it is very cool. It's very interesting. Um, but I think it's too too mana intensive actually. Um, it's definitely not a glimpse of nature. So, I think before tax you draw cards with Garrett. I mean, he's got a lot of the big stuff out. He's on top. Means it was probably halfway decent. I think you draw first, though. I really do. Like I, I have this sinking suspicion that like ML probably plays two to three O ring effects. Probably one enlightened tutor in his deck, maybe. Um, and if the Garrett gets ringed, like it did last game, actually, um, that's kind of a beating because I mean you just basically lost the opportunity of uh, six additional cards there. Going for three to get Reclamation Sage to blow up the Batter Skull. Okay. That's good. It keeps his clock up. And that way it allows him to attack for nine and put ML to dead next turn. Which takes three down to 13 if he blocks. Follow on attack is three from the treetop. Six, nine, plus yeah, enough. Wouldn't be shocked if he fires up the treetop here. Just, yeah, close the game out as fast as possible. Still think it's right to draw cards here, though. Just just in case, because, I mean, like, ML's going to have to probably spend a card at least to get rid of all the stuff on the board, not including the Garrick. I guess you have, like, Planner Cleansing or something like that, like Plains Planner Cleansing. Yeah, it's a... Uh... We have comeuppance. That'd be cool to see. So the wrath feels like it. What was under the Moss War Bridge? No, it doesn't show. Yeah, Brimaz. Yeah. Very sweet card. I love Brimaz. It is a model of efficiency. Only thing against it is it was a legend. Um, but against this sort of size control issue, it's not really gonna not really gonna fit the bill. Yeah. Well, Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off there. Um, this, this game is, I, I think, for all intents and purposes, over. Um, ML has kind of acknowledged it. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this event. This is the 100-card uh, singleton event, the Chainsaw Massacre, which is hosted on Gathering.com. Um, our deck of the day was Five-Color Reanimator. Um, and uh, pretty fun deck. Uh, depends on your play style. Some people hate it. Um, so I guess it is relatively fun. I think it is a... a Fun deck because I mean it's a challenge generally to play. It's it's got a lot of lines to it, a lot of play to it. Um, and it's not per se always intuitive. Yes, there are easy hands um, with it, um, and there are difficult hands. Sometimes you might as well, like we did against White Weenie in the second round. You know, just found a way to kill our our own rector um, and, and win the game. Um, sometimes you don't, and you just lose miserably. But um, it's a pretty all in narrow deck. But it, it is in a way like Storm. It's like any combo. You know, it's just it's more narrow and. Um, Every once in a while, I care to I like to play those because I mean, you know, um, it makes it makes for challenging play, I think, um, for the most part. But I hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, if you are curious about the event, I hope you will read on forum MTG Salvation, which is also linked in Gatherland, and uh, join us on Saturday uh, for this event. Um, all right, take care now.